Hey, welcome, welcome. Let's do this once again, all you CISSP wannabes. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day. I'm Colin Weaver. Every single day I ask you two questions to help you as you continue doing your studies. Let's go ahead and get right to it. All right, here's the situation. You want to increase the security or in an effort to increase the security of your SSH implementation on your Linux server, you have gone in and implemented the technique that requires users to first attempt to connect to three seemingly random ports before trying to establish a connection to port 22. Now, what of the following terms, or which of the following terms is describing the technique that you are going and implementing? Go ahead and click on pause if you need to, give those a look, and then when you're ready, click play and we can talk each one through. All right, first answer choice up there, firewalking. It is not the correct answer. That is not what we're describing right here. Firewalking is actually a technique where you go in and endeavor to uh, determine what the access control list rules are on a, a device that's performing some firewalling to basically go in and learn what the device will or will not allow pass through. Uh, so, nope, not what we're looking for. Next choice on the list is port mapping. Nope, port mapping is really just mapping a port to a service. So, that's not really what we're doing. Uh, the third choice, however, is exactly what we're doing. We're port knocking. Port knocking is an idea that says that if somebody were to attempt to establish a connection, say, to port 22 directly, the service does not respond. If, however, you first go to, say, port 2222, then to port 6666, and then to port 8888, and then go to port 22, suddenly, lo and behold, the service responds. So it's, it's this idea of almost like a secret handshake, that if you know to go and, you know, touch and wiggle and, and feel right here, then suddenly the door opens kind of deal. Port knocking is by a lot of people viewed as, as security through obscurity. You're not really securing your systems, you're just adding some, you know, some, some effort to the attacker to go in and figure out which ports should they go to before going and trying uh, to actually connect. Uh, I put a link to a, a pretty critical article of port knocking in the descriptions below if you kind of want to see the compare and contrast. Because most of the stuff that you're going to go out there and read about doing port knocking is simply going to go and say, here's how you do it if you want to do it. Here's, say, on a Linux system is how you would implement it, say, with IP tables or something like that. Um, and then um, uh, the article, the other article that I put down there goes in and kind of says, this is why port knocking is not a great idea. So I leave it to your judgment as to kind of which one is best. Uh, for you and how you want to do security in your network. The last three choices, secret handshakes, uh, session triggering, and kernel handshake, those are ones that I just made up to put in and serve as uh, additional distractors. So uh, the, the question is very much a, a, a definition of what port knocking is. So all that other stuff's just there to try and confuse you if you weren't sure what the term meant. All right, here comes question number two. Big old long list of IP addresses right there. What I want you to tell me is which of them are not. RFC 1918 addresses. Go ahead and click on pause, look closely at them, and then when you have decided which ones are not RFC 1918 addresses, go ahead and click play again and we can point, which, point them out. Okay, RFC 1918, if you didn't already know, is the RFC that goes in and carves out the so-called private IP address space. It involves three ranges of addresses. It's the entire 10 network, 10.0.0.0 slash 8. So that's 16.7 million and some change IP addresses. It contains 16 class B networks, the 172.16 network, all the way through the 172.31 network. Um, and then it contains 256 class Cs, which is the entire 192.168.0.0 slash 16 prefix. So that slash 16, which most people go, wait, that's not class C. Um, that slash 16 is essentially the, the supernet of the 192.168 network because then it says if it's 192.168 anything, it's all of them. Okay, so that's what we're looking for there. So let's look at the answer choices. Uh, 172.32, uh, that is not an RFC 1918 address. Uh, it, people get tricked on this because they see the 172 or in some cases they see the 192. Uh, they see that first octet and their brain goes, oh, private. Nope, not private. 172.32 is very much a globally routable IP address. Similar here, 192.88.4.3. 192, people see that and their brains go, oh, that's private address space. No, it's not. Only the 192.168 network is private. So this is a 192.188, which is very much a globally routable address. 
All right, how about the 169.254 addressed? A lot of us know that as, a, 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 I call it a PIPA or APIPA, Automatic Private IP Addressing, which has been around for, gosh, for a very long time, uh, but it is not part of RFC 1918. So yes, if your device is configured to get an IP address automatically and it does not get one, yes, it's going to, most operating systems will select an IP address from the 169.254 range, but it wasn't defined by RFC 1918, so it is not considered one of the private address ranges. The next one that is not part of the RFC 1918 range is the 131.107 address. Uh, the 131.107 is very frequently used in examples when you're reading stuff out on the internet, uh, but it is not private. It is very much globally routable. And then finally, the 172.6.32.1 address. Again, 172 it has you thinking that it's O class B, somehow private, um, but no, it's 172.6, which is outside the range of 172.16 through 172.31. So 172.6 is also globally routable. So not part of private uh, IP address space from RFC 1918. All right, done. Two more questions accomplished. Hope you enjoyed them. Hope they help you as you continue your prep for your exam. Um, if you like these questions, please love on that like button. And if you want to get them every single day, click on the subscribe button because I do these every single day, okay. which means I'll be back tomorrow. Bye.